agenda. Any changes? Um, I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries five to zero, which brings us to proclamations and presentations, tab two, clear the chamber of commerce update with Mr. Barry. Good afternoon, Council. J. Scott Berry, Executive Director of the Tiberius Chamber of Commerce. Uh, just to give you my monthly update, we are still gaining new members even during this time. Uh, we had four in the month of August, which is a low number, but for the month of August, it's actually standard. It's actually right on what we've done the last two Augusts, Augusts in a row. Um, also, as you know, there is a uh, wonderful membership assistance program that the city is doing, offering our smaller members half price renewals of their membership. And in the month of August, we had 14. Take advantage of that. So that is great. That is a program that's working and is helping us to retain um, our members. Um, we continue to be open limited hours, Tuesday through Thursday, 10 to 4. Um, one thing I do want to update you on, and everybody that can hear this, is the CARES Act funding. The CARES Act money, which is now available, the application is open. You can actually apply on the TavariesChamber.com website. It will take you directly to the link. Currently, it is for businesses that were considered non-essential or forced to close. That is going to be being removed within the next week to two weeks, and it will be open for any business who had negative financial impact due to COVID-19. There are many that were classified as essential businesses who were fine the first few months, but now are starting to see slack and starting to see reduction and having financial obstacles, and so that is why it has been opened up. Um, there's still money available, there are still slots available, um, and as of this morning, I spoke to uh, the leaders of that at the county level, and that should be available within the week to 10 days, depending on how it takes to redo the application uh, with, on the IT side. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Then, um, the other thing I just want to make sure you know, we are doing several of our events uh, back again, our business after hours. Because it's a hard event to social distance at, we are still not doing, uh, but we are doing our networking lunch this month at Fish Camp Lake Eustis on the 15th of September. And on the 23rd, we are doing our monthly luncheon. That will be at the Pavilion on the Lake. It is limited to 50. If you wish to attend, please do RSVP. It's going to be sponsored by our one of our newest uh, members, Immunity Health Spa. They were literally at the first, at the luncheon this last month, and the hospital is normally the September sponsor. The hospital is not doing in-person events. So they let me know they couldn't do it. So I said, it's available. And they literally, their first meeting said, we want to do it. So yay. So um, it'll be good. And we're working on a speaker that will have to do with health and wellness that will tie in with what that business is. Any other questions? OK. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Thank you. Which brings us to swearing in by city attorney, disclosure of expertise communications, Ms. Holt. Anyone in the audience who wishes to be heard on any quasi judicial matters who will be sworn in, that would be agenda item to tab 639. Use the microphone. Six three nine. Microphone. The to speak on this topic. I'm sorry if you couldn't hear me. Let's, let's do that again. How about that? If anyone in the audience wishes to be heard today on quasi judicial matters who need to be sworn in, that would be tab number 6 through 9. Please stand and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Council, if anyone has had any ex parte communications, now would be the appropriate time to disclose. Um, we've had many discussions with believable council on the comprehensive plan update, so I'm not to speak for everyone else, but I know that we've discussed this in multiple meetings and multiple hearings. So. Um, it's just tab six is the only one. Thank you, Mayor. We have one resolution and one ordinance. Resolution 2020-21, a resolution of the City of Tiberias, Florida, a meeting resolution. 2020-06, FEMA Public Assistance, authorizing CARES Act funding as a recipient with Lake County, Florida, and authorizing the city administrator 
to execute documents related to CARES Act funding for the COVID-19 pandemic emergency, providing for conflict, separability, and an effective date. Ordinance 2020-10, an ordinance of the City of Tavares, <clears throat> amending the City of Tavares comprehensive plan in its entirety pursuant to Florida statutes, chapter 163. Providing for adoption of the City of Tavares Comprehensive Plan 2040, including amendments to the Future Land Use Element and the Future Land Use Map 2020 20, the Housing Element, the Conservation Element, the Transportation Element, the Public Facilities Element, the Capital Improvements Elements, the Concurrency Element, and the Intergovernment Toll Coordination Element, providing for creation of a Recreation and Open Space Element inclusive of all associated tables, exhibits, and maps, providing for the repeal of ordinances inconsistent with the ordinance providing for conflict, conflicting provisions, providing for perseverability, providing for transmittal, and providing for an effective date. Thank you, Ms. Dober. Which brings us to the consent agenda. Does anyone want to pull anything from the consent agenda? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries five to zero. Which brings us to resolutions. TAC 5. Approval of resolution 2020-21. Amending resolution 2020-06. Authorizing federal public assistance for the COVID-19 pandemic to include CARES Act funding. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Um, this is this resolution um, amends, as we stated, amends resolution um, 20, 2006 and provides for authorization of CARES Act funding. And some of the background on this item is on March 13 of this year, the President declared a state of emergency for the coronavirus as known as COVID-19. The incident period began January 20, 2020, but the ending date for the disaster has not yet been determined. The City of Tiberias has incurred eligible costs related to the COVID-19 pandemic emergency. And on April 1, 2020, this Council adopted Resolution 2006, providing authorization for the City Administrator to make application for federal public assistance for COVID-19 pandemic, also known as Disaster 4486, Resolution 2026. This provided authorization to execute all agreements, contracts, and any documents related to the application for federal public assistance. In addition to FEMA disaster assistance, the state of Florida has received federal CARES Act funding and has allocated funds to Florida counties for eligible expenditures related to the pandemic. Each county month may allocate funds to municipalities within their jurisdiction. Municipalities receiving allocations for the CARES Act funding will be deemed as subrecipients for federal grant reporting. The City of Tiberias has incurred eligible costs related to COVID-19 pandemic emergency and therefore Resolution 2020-20 provides expanded authorization to include the CARES Act funding in addition to FEMA disaster funding for eligible expenditures. This resolution is required under the federal disaster grant um, the options before you is move to approve resolution 2020-21 authorizing the city administrator to apply for CARES Act funding allocations from Lake County, Florida as a subrecipient for eligible COVID-19 pandemic expenditures and to execute all documents related to and required by the application for CARES Act subrecipient funding with Lake County, Florida. Uh, or option to move not to approve. Staff recommends that you approve the resolution 2020 Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Hutton. And if we get your request from the audience, uh, and then uh, from the public want to speak on this topic. So I'm going to close public input. Council, do you have any questions for Ms. Hutton? Just to be clear, this allows us to apply for a second pack to get funding from the public government. Correct. Past items like our uh, sanitation, um, hand sprays, masks, things of that nature, uh, and then future items that are related to COVID. Um, so, for example, if we are going to uh, have virtual meetings.
during a future pandemic, uh, some of that video equipment that's necessary to hold virtual meetings during a pandemic would be eligible. Uh, so we'll put a package together of things we've spent and things that would assist us in future pandemics. That goes to the county, that goes to the state of Florida, they go through the list and they say either eligible or ineligible. So that's the kind of stuff that's available. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Have a motion. Those in favor? Aye. Motion carries five to zero. Which brings us to the transmittal hearing, tab 6, ordinance 2020-10, comprehensive plan update through 2040. Can you Thank you, Mayor. legislation requires local governments to maintain a comprehensive plan that provides the policy foundation for local planning and land use decisions. The comprehensive plan presents a vision for the future with long-range goals and objectives that affect local government. Included in the comprehensive plan are elements pertaining to future land use, transportation, housing, recreation and open space, public facilities, capital improvements, conservation, and intergovernmental coordination. City Council directed staff to complete the process of updating the City of Tavares Comprehensive Plan pursuant to Chapter 163 of the Florida Statutes, and on December 5th, 2018, approved the scope of services of Kimley Horn Consulting Firm to assist, assist staff in completing this task that was estimated to take approximately two years. The process included hosting multiple visioning workshops providing the public and the Comprehensive Plan Committee, which was made up of city and county stakeholders, the opportunity to express ideas about the future of Tavares and to provide input and feedback on draft elements and key issues. Ordinance 2020-10 proposes the adoption of a new Comprehensive Plan. It's entitled uh, Taking Flight Comprehensive Plan 2040, and it replaces in its entirety the city's Comprehensive Plan 2020 adopted on June 6, 2001. Uh, what council will be voting on tonight is uh, whether or not to move to approve the transmittal of Ordinance 2020-10 and the proposed comp comprehensive plan to the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity for review. And once they've had an opportunity to comment, the comprehensive plan will come back to city council for final adoption. At their July 16, 2020 meeting, Planning and Zoning Board, uh, acting as the uh, Land Planning Agency, voted unanimously to recommend approval of Ordinance 2020-10, and staff recommends that City Council moves to approve the transmittal of Ordinance 2020-10 to the state for review. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, representatives from Kimley Horn to give a brief presentation of the changes that we've made to the comprehensive plan. Uh, Mr. Kelly Clever, uh, Mike Otto, and James Taylor. I just want to add one thing just to be clear. Um, today it's about transmitting the plan to the state to receive their comments. That is correct. Those comments will come back to the city council along with the planning and zoning comments, along with the committee that you put together to um, review uh, the comp plan uh, and the LDRs. Uh, along with staff's comments, along with the public. So the goal is to get all the comments of the plan back to you at an upcoming meeting so that you can take all those comments and make any changes you need to make. I just wanted clarity that today was the transmittal. And you, you said it, I just wanted to punctuate it. All right, go ahead. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, for the record, Kelly Clucker with Kelly Horn. And as Black said, with me is Mr. Mike Botto and Mr. James Taylor. Um, just want to have a very brief presentation, uh, more opportunity for you all to ask questions, because I know there's a pretty lengthy uh, review process. So uh, if we can go ahead and move to the next slide. So what we'd like to do is basically just introduce what, it, what were the goals of the plan from the outset. Uh, working with staff, it was, Take a look at our current comprehensive plan and 
basically come up with recommendations. How can we simplify it? How can we reorganize it? We realize that it's kind of been uh, band-aided over the last couple of years, so how can we make it function more truly like a comprehensive plan versus individual segments? So that was the first thing. The other thing was to look at the plan from a regulatory standpoint. A comprehensive plan should not have land development code regulations, and your plan actually did. DEO, as well as the state statute, actually says this is not the place for it. Move those into your zoning code, your land development code. Incorporate the references from other city plans. And then the overarching question is what does the city want to be over the next 10, 20, 40 years? So a lot of those questions are answered or addressed in this comprehensive plan update. So there again, what we've talked about is kind of what is the overarching reason why we do why we do some of this. You have to do this every seven years as adopted, but the schedule is actually adopted by DEO. Uh, I will say that you're actually one year ahead of that adoption schedule, uh, which is always a good thing because a lot of communities are behind schedule, at which point you cannot uh, address or actually hear any land use or conference plan changes until your entire comp plan is, is updated. So kudos to, to this council as well as the staff for moving that process ahead. Uh, the comprehensive plan is a series of, and I'll say, in, internal documents. There's what we call the goals, objectives, policies. That's kind of where the rubber meets the road of the comp plan itself. That's the, where the, you're saying, this is what we want to do, this is how we're going to do it, and this is what we're going to do moving forward. There's what's called the data inventory and analysis, and that's all of that analysis that we have to do to basically formulate and inform the policies themselves. We also have a series of maps. And one of the extra documents that we, Kimberly Corner, like to do is, is kind of that roadmap uh, where we identify, especially when we're undertaking such a extensive review, is to say, you know, here was all of your previous comprehensive plan policies, and here's the disposition of those. We forward that along uh, with the comp plan up to DEO so everybody understands if there was a future land use policy for this, it's either been amended, deleted, or it's now this new number. So it's easier to understand if we're moving forward. And there again, what it's not, it's not your land development code. So where are we in the process? We're in the last little bit of this. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as the uh, city administrator said, this is the transmittal here. The state and all of the review agencies, including Lake County, have a period of time to provide comments. I will tell you that there are zero comp plans to come back with no comments. There's either formal or some technical assistance comments, but there's always some level of comments. We get that in the form of what's called a, an org report objections, recommendations, and comments. We sit down, we work with staff, we identify what we need to change, what's advisory, and, and then move forward from there. So in about 60 days, plus or minus, we should be back in front of you, depending on how this gets scheduled. So what are the plan highlights? Just to kind of give you a quick overview, then we'll kind of dive into uh, the, each of the elements. Uh, first and foremost, we addressed a lot of the changes that have occurred since the last comp plan was adopted with respect to the Florida statutes. Over 200 different changes have occurred. Uh, some of those have been as simple as definitional types of changes or references to military bases, but nonetheless, it's one of those things you have to go through and identify does your comprehensive plan adhere to those components. We looked at consolidating and reorganizing. What we looked at was there were policies and different elements that did the same thing, but were in a different section. So we said, let's move, if it's a transportation-related policy, let's actually put it in transportation. Let's not have it in three different sections. Uh, we updated the future land use categories. This is an important thing to remember is we increased the range of density and, and housing options available to the city. We didn't take things away. We created more options. Uh, same thing with mobility and transportation. We're addressing all modes of transportation, whether or not it's the vehicle, which is, of course, the primary uh, course that we take right now, uh, all the way through bicycle, pedestrian, and, and those alternative modes also with the recognition of your airport. Uh, then also one of the more important things is there is the addition of the recreation and open space element. Uh, that's something that you did not have previously, so you know, working with staff, there's a new element, and then just the overall layout and design, as Mike said, uh, you know, taking flight, uh, taking that play on words, especially with the seaplane base, uh, and the way that you're you know, forward thinking, it just made sense. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike and James. They're going to start through uh, portions of the elements. And then I'll bring it back at the very end. Great, thank you. And again, for the record, Mike Vado with Kimberly Horn, Mayor, and members of the Council. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. So we're going to dive right into the land use element, which is kind of the crux that drives the rest of the plan. Um, and so a couple of highlights of what we did in coordination. 
information with staff and, and with, with um, input from the public. So we, one of the major things we did was we consolidated some of the future land use categories that were in your previous plan. So, uh, for example, uh, there was a suburban expansion category um, that was rolled into the low density category. Similarly, there was a moderate and medium. They are very close in their intent, so in order to simplify the plan, uh, we move forward and we combine those, so now you just have the medium density category uh, in opposition to having those two. Likewise, there was a mixed-use neighborhood and mixed-use commercial um, categories, <clears throat> and after a bunch of discussion, it made sense to make those just one mixed-use category for uh, simplicity and ease of implementation and clarity for both the city and for uh, the development community. We added a category, the residential estate category, which is um, for single-family homes up to one dwelling in per acre. So that was a category that was not previously in a plan, but is something in the city's toolbox now, uh, whether that be by annexation, but it's another uh, it's another category at the city's disposal. Um, we also clarified some of the annexation policies that's located in its own objective within this element, again, to provide additional clarity on uh, what we heard was, a, was, was an important topic throughout this process. Um, and like Kelly mentioned at the beginning, we wanted to incorporate other planning activities that the city had undertaken since the last conference of plan. So that would be the downtown master plan, uh, the city's economic development strategy, and the seaplane based master plan. So we looked at all of those things and integrated them into the, throughout the plan at the land use element and within other elements as well. And here's a table that you likely saw in your review of the draft plan. So this is the table of the development standards for the various uh, land use categories uh, on your future land use map. So that's reflecting uh, each of the categories, their, um, their allowable densities and uh, non-residential intensities. So with that, we'll pass it over to James to talk a little bit about transportation mobility. Good afternoon. So as Kelly was mentioning, a lot of things in your comprehensive plan weren't updated to the latest Florida statutes. And that's a, that was a big goal of what we did with the transportation element. Uh, we started out with a name change foremost to transportation and mobility. Uh, mobility is kind of a buzzword that's been out there. There's a lot of best practices that's been written on it. It's kind of a recognition that the city could use some flexibility with thinking about how people move around. Uh, typically, a lot of comprehensive plans in the past have been very automobile-centric. This is more a recommendation of you know, uh, getting, with, getting with the latest statutes language, getting with the latest best practices. It, but more than anything, it provides flexibility to the city to be able to address the ways that people move around if it's not the automobile or bicycle or golf cart and sidewalks, all these things are solutions that, that the city uh, to add more tools into the toolbox. Um, the, uh, the focus on mobility came about uh, with the inclusion of some things that will be more concrete in your land development code. This is a visioning document. It opens the door to those sorts of things that you can incorporate to your land development code. Uh, one of the things that we did incorporate directly into the comprehensive development was the, the addition of this idea of level of service, not just on the roadway, but also on the sidewalk, also with the transit system, and also with uh, the, the bikes and beds. Uh, and we learned a lot from your community meetings that your, your residents are really passionate about getting out into the nature and enjoying these trails. Uh, we wanted to make sure that that was recognized as, as part of this visioning document to promote those trails those golf cart accessibility areas that, that folks love. Next slide. Um, so with that recognition between the mobility and the land use, as, as Mike just introduced, uh, these two things go together. And we want to make sure that's in your vision that uh, one doesn't happen without the other. The land use and the transportation are really tied together. Uh, the staff did a, a remarkable job in, back in 2017 with this downtown Tavares master plan um, that also needed to be incorporated into your comprehensive plan to start adding some of those things in your land development code that aren't, aren't there already. So again, we're talking about flexibility, we're talking about opening the doors to a lot of good ideas that are now in your comprehensive plan that haven't been in your past. As well, so we talked about the trails, so Kaiba Trail and those other um, 
scenic highway designations. We wanted to make sure that uh, those were recognized in the comprehensive plan. And uh, the seaplane base, of course, is an integral part of your system. It's transportation as well. So there's a lot of policies that are incorporated along those lines as well. So we'll, uh, we'll dive back in. We're going right down the line here. So the housing element. Uh, this element of the comprehensive plan um, is intended to have, include the goals, objectives, and policies. In this case, wanted to show that the city is providing a variety of housing options throughout the city. Um, housing types, housing options for both your existing re residents and to attract future residents. Um, there is policies included um, as far as um, attainable housing. Um, so for example, uh, supporting for when you do update your land development regulations, considering flexible regulations to attract that type of housing or to, um, to forward the process uh, in a more streamlined fashion uh, should the, the city choose to go that route. Um, same thing, considering, considering uh, incentives and so on and so forth. So those things aren't defined in the plan, but like James said with transportation, we're setting the stage for you to implement those things as you update your code. Um, the housing element also talks about preservation of your existing housing stock and recognizing um, uh, historic elements that you have here in the city too. And also addresses on coordination with the county and others on, on housing programs that, um, that are available here in the community. The next element, public facilities element. So this addresses water, wastewater, solid waste, stormwater drainage. Um, and so uh, the, the objective of this goal is to, to maximize the use of your existing facilities and then planning for current future demand on those systems. Um, there's a specific uh, new objective and related policies on, that support the city undertaking an updated stormwater master plan. Uh, that was something that we heard throughout the process that was uh, something that the city desires to undertake um, in the coming years here. Um, so there's a specific policy in the comprehensive plan supporting that. Um, a lot of these things also relate to land use and conservation. So we made sure that those links were made in the policy language. Um, and then there's your 10-year water supply facilities work plan. So uh, there's a specific policy in this element that states that the the city will undertake a new 10-year water supply facilities work plan. Um, so by state statute, once uh, St. John's River Water Management District, once they update their regional water supply plan, uh, the city and the utilities department has 18 months to update the city's plan. Uh, so in our conversation with the water management district, I think it's supposed to go out for public comment in December with an or anticipated adoption in May of 2021, so we wanted to share that with, with you all, so that's on your radars. Uh, next is the conservation element. Another, another thing that was um, expressed to us throughout the process from the public is the recognition and the appreciation for the city's natural qualities. Uh, so there's specific policy language um, in this element that's uh, meant to conserve, protect, uh, manage and restore the city's natural resources. Um, like Kelly mentioned at the beginning, a lot of a lot of this exercise was reorganizing and, and making some things clear. So each of the objectives in the conservation element are um, related to air quality, water quality, uh, hazardous waste, so on and so forth. So um, that's been uh, been a lot more streamlined, simplified, and uh, it also has policy language that supports your existing ordinances on shoreline protection, floodplain management, so on and so forth. So a few more slides and then we'll be able to start talking about through some questions. But uh, one of the things that you've heard us talk about is you know, re referencing those existing policies and plans that the city already has in place. It's also recommending new things, such as in the case of the recreation and the open space element, the parks master plan. And literally what that is is basically taking what we've identified and prepared it in coordination with staff as part of the comprehensive plan is taking and creating almost like the land development code version but for parks. Now you may start saying, well why do we want to do some of these plans? And you know Mr. Dillon can, can opine on to this as well. But you know when you're going at and seeking grants, one of the first things they're gonna be looking at is do you have a master plan? Is it in your comprehensive plan? And that's where you start getting a lot of your points towards those achieving those uh, certain awards. 
The other thing is you start identifying, identifying those specific projects instead of saying, well, we'd like to do this. It's like, no, we've identified this in not only our comprehensive plan, but also our parks master plan for this project. Here's the reason why and the justification for it, including the, the financial aspects of it. So that's one of the reasons there, again, this element came about. Uh, it's actually required. You didn't have one, so we made sure to get you, get you into compliance at this point. But kind of like what we've been talking about, there are certain things that support other elements. So there again, the cross-references between economic development and land use and some of those infrastructure components, but with a more uh, narrowly focused component of recreation and open space. So then we get to uh, intergovernmental coordination. And this is basically an identification and the requirements of who you're going to work with as in for implementing city programs, policies, the plan, and that's everything from the county to, uh, you know, whoever at that point, DEP, the Water Management District, DOT, uh, you know, all of those entities. And basically saying, we, we recognize that there's a relationship between these organizations and we're going to continue to work with them or we will be working with them for the betterment of the city. That's the, that's the information that's included within this specific element. Capital improvements. Uh, I know this is a, a, a very important one because this is where you're basically saying these are the projects that we want to do as a city over the next, the, I'll say called the life of that specific CIP. All your projects, whether it's roadways, stormwater, solid waste, parks, you name it, all are in, included in that and it's incorporated into your comprehensive plan. Now, the one thing I do want to say is that you know you do, as, as you are adopting and amending your capital improvements plan every year, you do need to make an equity. Well, I'll say a brief amendment to your comprehensive plan, but the state does not recognize that as a full-blown amendment. It's basically recognized, you go through the process, and they basically check it off at that point to acknowledge that you have done that component. So there again, this is where you're starting to literally lay out over the next five years, so that short-term vision as well as the long-term vision for the projects and how you're going to fund those larger funding sources. So what are the next steps? So we're here tonight asking for uh, the recommendation of, of this body to transmit to the state. Uh, we go through a specific process. Uh, we say, you know, anticipated comments back within 60 days because there's some interim steps that the city does, whether it's transmitting up, acknowledgement by the state, get, uh, culminating all of the com uh, comments back. And then <laughs> there's there again. We come back with a series of recommendations, as uh, the city administrator noted. Uh, with any updates, amendments, and I'll say responses to those comments. Now, this looks like it's been pretty seamless for those, uh, for a lot of people. Uh, I will tell you that there has been a tremendous amount of work by city staff. Uh, you know, when you start thinking about the work, especially Mike and Antonio, and the hours they put in, and then Mr. Dillon, and then, uh, you know, even everybody that has put in the time. There's a reason the document is, is what we think is an extremely good document and it's because of the folks that you all have hired to, to represent your city. So with that, uh, we would be happy to answer any questions that you may have specific to any uh, one of the elements or the comprehensive plan in general. Just one more comment. Once the comprehensive plan gets through its entire process, another couple of months, um, the next thing we need to do is update our land development codes to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. And it is at that point where you'll see all those changes start to occur with uh, anyone who wants to build a building or a commercial uh, kind of thing as well. So that'll be after the comp plan is um, is adopted. Uh, back to you, Mayor. Have we received any requests from the audience? Is anyone from the audience, Mr. Yochum, would you like to come forward and answer questions? Please don't be of three minutes. <laughs> Please state your name and address. Vance Yoakum, 12619 Milwaukee. Uh, <clears throat> I just uh, been to several of these meetings. I've watched the process. And uh, my main observation as a taxpayer advocate and a fiscal watchdog is that I didn't ever see any kind of discussion about how much each of these new elements would cost. You know, when you talk about, well, we're increasing the level of service, so we include whether it's trails or walkways or other things, there hasn't been anything that I've seen, maybe I missed a meeting, but that said, okay, when we add this, this is going to add an extra $100,000 per mile or per you know, block for the cost of doing this because when you put it in the level of service, 
And then as you well know, then later you come to budget and say, well, we want to maintain the level of service. And you, once you pass this, you've agreed in the plans that it's going to come to you with a budget that, if I'm right, is that all of a sudden you got all these extra want issues added to the budget and to your plans, and yet there's not been any discussion that I've seen by any of you or the planning and zoning discussing, okay, when we add this, how much is it going to cost us in the future and every year and the maintenance and so forth. And I just, you know, I, government is just getting to the point where, you know, uh, and, and you guys, you aren't going back to the rollback rate, and this is one other reason why, is that you keep adding costs and burying them in levels of service. And uh, I just think that uh, I, I need to, I wanted to say that so it's on the record that I don't think you've been very fiscally conservative in this process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yocum. Anyone else from the audience like to speak? Then I'm going to close public input. And Mr. Drury, just to be clear, or what we're doing now does not have a fiscal impact on the city. It's more of setting goals for the city. Yeah, these are broad goals for your city. And from that, your land development regulations will be implemented. And from that, you'll have a five-year capital plan. You'll be reviewing and approving, as you do every year. You'll have an annual budget that you decide. I mean, for this, for, for, you know, we know this year you adopted a budget that was 25% lower than last year. You made that decision to reduce the budget. You adopted a budget with a lower millage rate. You adopted uh, a millage rate that's the lowest in five years. So every uh, year, you, being fiscally conservative, look at the budget, look at the plan, and you decide that year, based on economic conditions, based on uh, um, uh, affordability and what, what, what uh, you want to do, you, you adopt that annual budget at that time. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a comprehensive uh, plan on what the future of your city will look like, so that the public who uh, wants to build a building or owns land and wants to exercise their private property rights to do what they want with that land, knows how that should be uh, compatible with the plans of the city. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Does council have any questions? Mr. Singer? I just want to make a quick comment. Um, I want to thank uh, Kimberly Horn for all their hard work. And I appreciate what you said about the, uh, the staff involvement. That's uh, a lot of things that people don't see what goes on behind the scenes, but I know uh, they worked hard on this project. It's uh, been very exciting to see it come to fruition. It's been nice to see all the community involvement, having all the residents come to uh, the workshops and the uh, stakeholders that have been involved. Uh, I'm just, I'm really excited. I'm anxious to hear what the state has to say. And I just want to, once again, thank you for everything you've done. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other comments from council? Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we approve the transmittal of the comments plan of the tower to see other comments. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries five to zero. Thank you very much. All right, which brings us to general government tab seven community grant award. Ms. Nova. Thank you, Mayor. The council budgeted $2,000 in the current fiscal year for community grant awards. The city advertised in October an uh, invitation to submit community grant applications for area non for profit organizations with a 501c3 designation for up to $500 in funding for community and social service projects. On January 15, 2020, the council awarded two grant applications in the amount of $500 each, resulting in a $1,000 remaining balance in budgeted community grant funds. On February 19, 2020, Council moved to, uh, moved to remove application deadlines for, from the community grant policy for grants to be awarded until funds are extinguished from the program. The City received a new grant application from Love Extensions, Inc and the information uh, and application was included in your agenda packets. A ranking committee consisting of the city clerk, finance, finance director, 
and Community Services Director met on August 27th to review the application for qualification and determine the application met the criteria for the program. And um, it is um, up for your decision. Thank you, Ms. Novak. Did we have any requests from the audience? Seeing no one from the public wanting to speak on this topic, I'm going to close public input. Council, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, um, I'll make a motion to approve option one to award community grant amount of $500 for the I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Okay. Thank you, love extension. Um, which brings us to tab eight. The extension of interlocal agreement with the school board for joint use of facilities, community services. Mr. Aldrich. Thank you, Mayor. As you know, um, for the past several years, we've had an agreement with Lake County School Board to use facilities. We let them use our facilities. They let us use their facilities. It's worked out well. It's an annual agreement that we're going to be setting up. Um, what's before you today is just your approval to renew that for the next year. We have a, 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 an agreement in front of you. It'll pretty much stay the same. We're just asking you your blessings to go ahead and, and sign off on another year for that. Thank you, Mr. Aldrich. Mr. Drew? No, that's, I think you've covered it pretty well. Uh, it'll come back to you every year in case you, as a council, want to make any changes to it. Did we have any requests from the audience to speak? Seeing no one wanting to speak from the audience, I'm going to close public input. Council, have any questions or comments? I'll make a motion to approve option one. Sorry. We have a motion and a second. I want to say thank you for all your hard work doing that because I know that we set up the softball field so much better now. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries five to zero. Which brings us to tab nine, acceptance of negotiated contract with Gator Sketch Corporation for the architectural design services of the Public Works and Solid Waste Facility. Public Works, Mr. Dillon. Thank you, Mayor. On May 20, 2020, City Council awarded the architectural design service Gator Sketch Corporation for the design of the new solid waste and public works operations facility and authorized staff to negotiate the contract. Staff negotiated the contract for architectural engineering services with Gator Sketch in the amount of $644,574, which represents 9.2% of the $7 million budget. As part of the contract negotiations, staff utilized the design professional fee guidelines for the Department of Management Services, which reflects the current market conditions for architectural the negotiated fee as well as within those guidelines. The contract covers architectural services, design engineering services, development of construction documents and bid specifications, construction bid services, project management, construction management, and construction oversight, procurement services for furnishings and equipment, audiovisual, and information technology services. You have two options before you to approve the negotiated EIA contract with Gator Sketch Corporation for the architectural design services of the solid waste and public works operations in the amount of $644,574 or not to approve. Staff recommends to approve the negotiated AIA contract. This will impact the proposed design cost is in line with the salt waste budget. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. Is there anyone from the audience who'd like to speak on this topic? Seeing no one, I'm going to close public input. Council, do you have any questions? I do. I've got a few. Um, if we can look at page four, please. It says um, geotechnical engineering by owner. Do we know what that expense is going to be? We've already been through the phase one aspect of the environmental, which was required from the EDA grant. We submitted our application for $2.2 million. Um, the second phase will be uh, up to the architect to come up with a design and more location. Once we get that survey and so forth, We'll have a better understanding of that cost. Okay. Then um, also on page uh, let's see what that on page three, it, it discusses uh, Mr. Drury being the contractual authority and you being the project manager. But then on the contract, it talks about two different people being the, the project manager, the architect of record, which is obviously expected, but why are we calling you project manager with your license? I see conflict and all sorts of other issues. And I didn't see that. So, right, so we're gonna we're gonna have you designated as owner's representative, and we'll remove the title project manager. 
Thank you. And one last thing I have on here is that with material costs going through the roof, uh, lumber at 40 plus percent going up, I just want us to be really sensitive to that as this project gets designed, that if those costs continue, that we may need to bring this building down to a smaller size. Because that's, that's a huge concern out there currently. Thank you. Those are all the questions I have, ma'am. Council, have any other questions? All right. Well, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we go with staff's recommendation of option one, please. Sorry. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just one discussion. Ms. Puigas had mentioned that will be uh, taken care of in, with the motion. Believe so. Uh, yeah, we're we're gonna design the building within the budget, and we're gonna change the um, term of his um, title. Yeah. Any other comments or questions from council? Uh, we have a motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We that carries five to zero. Which brings us to new business. Is there any new business? Good. Um, uh, Mr. Singer. Yes. Uh, with um, November 11th being uh, Veterans Day coming up, I would like to see if uh, the city could do something uh, to recognize uh, veterans. I don't know if we could uh, perhaps put up some the flags. Up. flags and yeah, the council would like us to put some flags on uh, Main Street mm -hmm. and the holders we have on the current, we can make that happen. You want it on the day of, you want it during the whole week, does it? All right. Very good, we'll do that. What kind of cost would that? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> we're probably going to have to use our 4th of July flags and uh, we'll use our staff to um, go ahead with the cherry picker and install them. So I think we can do it within our means. Good question. That's all. Any other new business? All right, so we'll move on to old business. Any old business? All right, let's see any old business. We'll move on to audience be heard. Have I received any requests from the audience? It looks like Mr. Yoakum is running forward, so um, if you please see your name and address, and you have three minutes. Vance Yoakum, 12619 Milwaukee. Just wanted to share with you, because I've been trying to hit uh, other cities, and uh, how are their uh, town council cut their the, the fees that they get per meeting? In other words, they have to show up to get paid. And if they get, they were two hundred and fifty dollars each meeting, and they cut it in half to show some empathy with uh, the rest of the community in this pandemic economic environment. Uh, and then I was at uh, Minneola; they've rolled back their taxes below the rollback rate. Uh, they uh, are just approved a new fire station, and it was pay as you go. They saved up the cash to pay for it. And then the architect was kind of complaining about, well, he couldn't put a tower in because of the budget. He couldn't do this because of the budget. And they just take the approach that they want to control costs for their residents. And I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to come forward? Please come forward and say your full name and address, and you have three minutes. Belinda Rank, 216 Fern Avenue, um, longtime resident, my very whole life. And we drive our golf carts. Two weeks ago, we came up, and I kind of wanted an update about what's going on with the violence and severities in the shootings. Thank you. Um, Chief, I don't know if you're able to speak on all of the issues, but what you can, I would, we would appreciate. <laughs> I know that the web page posts regularly. Put him on the hot seat. The, uh, the, the department has taken the approach towards the violence that's happening in the city. 
Um, we have enhanced our patrol. Um, it's important to realize um, that we have a generally good handle on the people that are responsible for this. Uh, our detectives, our road patrol is working diligently every day. We are meeting with the state attorney's office and the investigations are actually moving forward at a pace that is good. I really can't get into details as to be expected, uh, but we are moving forward and the areas, the smaller area that is experiencing these issues, the officers, if you live in that area, you will notice a tremendous, uh, unprecedented presence of police officers during that time. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. I don't. I feel um, that we have a pretty good handle on what the situation is, and I feel confident in the officers. They're working very hard and very proud of them um, and keeping it um, under control. I will finally add that we are not the only city that's experiencing this. Uh, there was shootings in Leesburg, Eustis, and Outdoor, and we are working with the Sheriff's Office. We had a meeting last week with them and other cities uh, to kind of get this um, wrapped up. But uh, not specifically probably what you want to hear, but I will tell you that it is, it is probably number one in our department. Does anyone else in the audience like to come forward? Please come forward, say your full name, and address, and you have three minutes. Christy Carmen, 204 North Rockingham, uh, uh, Just as a comment on, um, first of all, thank you for everything that the police are doing and um, the city is doing for our protection. And um, as a resident, it's noticeable. My question is, is as you address the stuff that you are able to discuss with the involvement of the, um, all the members of the city of Tiberias, is there a way that the residents have some sort of um, public knowledge, whether it's a website, to that type of interaction? That's all. Thank you. Chief? Yes, I would strongly encourage, I don't know if you had a chance to look at our Facebook page or anything, but uh, information that we can, we at least we will put on the Facebook page. Um, also, um, if there's a specific question or concern, um, give us a call and ask to speak to one of the investigators working the case. And we might be able to get a little more deeper for you if you have a specific issue. But I strongly encourage everyone to uh, look at our Facebook page. It's a fairly active page. And things that we can post, we will post on there. And we will be careful that when we do post, that we post accurately. Because like any type of situation, it's very fluid. You know, two hours later, the whole thing can change. Two hours later, it can change. So we'll be very careful when we post. But um, give us a call. And say, I want to speak to someone about the shootings, and I guarantee you we will sit there and speak one on one, get a little detail. Thank you. And, Chief, I know that I'm aware of this, but uh, when warrants are out, you try to keep them secret so people don't know that you're coming to get them. Is that correct? Yes, we don't. Yeah, I, you know, let's say, let's say, pretend that there's, we have three or four warrants out there, okay? If you sit there and say we're after, you know, uh, so, 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 next thing you know, it could potentially, you know, be difficult to locate. So, yeah. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to come forward? All right, I'm going to close that out and we'll move on to reports, Mr. Jerry. Just a reminder that we have our budget uh, hearing tomorrow at 5.05 here. Uh, pretty excited about this year's budget. Uh, it's one of the most fiscally conservative budgets we've ever put together as a council. Uh, we began this process in uh, January. Uh, you as a board worked hard, the public's worked hard. We've had great workshop, public input. And we have brought this budget down uh, to uh, kind of a record for fiscal conservancy, in my view, for a community like ours. Um, just some highlights. The uh, proposed property tax rate is the lowest in five years. Um, that says a lot. We were growing city. Lowest uh, property tax rate in five years. Congratulations. Um, the rate's been reduced two consecutive years in a row. The proposed debt service is the lowest tax rate in the last nine years. Uh, the rate has been reduced every year for the last eight years. Uh, the uh, proposed city budget, recognizing you know, everything that we need to do, was reduced 25% over the current year. Uh, reserves appropriation was increased. We have a very stable government here, and we have a tax reduction program that is not reactionary or overreactionary. It is well thought out, 
thanks to you all and the budgets that you have done. Uh, and it allows our city to continue to provide the services that the public and the business community so depends on in a stable and methodical way. There are some cities that may be um, uh, having fiscal situations that uh, are overreaction and then the business community and the citizens feel that. What's nice about this city is we are a steady as she goes city. We're fiscally responsible, we lower the military, we lower the budget in a methodical and systematic way. We don't uh, gut and get rid of all the services that our citizens and businesses so rely on. So we have a great budget uh, workshop at 5.05 tomorrow, and I look forward to continuing to deliberate that um, fiscally conservative budget that you all are moving forward with. That's all I have to add. Thank you.
and then we bird dog it through the whole process. And that means, you know, talking to our legislators, talking to, to them. So it's well on its way, and uh, hopefully we'll have an answer, you know, in 60 days. That's all I have. Thank you. Well, with no further ado, this meeting is adjourned. Everybody enjoy your afternoon.